For the last year or so, we've watched these new 3DS XL systems explode in pricing. Online, they're worth more now currently used in decent eBay condition than they were back brand new sealed in the box. I said a little while ago, I think it's time to start buying 3DS stuff. I still think it's time to start buying 3DS stuff, but I think we also have to be a bit smarter about it. And that's what we're going to talk about here today. Guys, if you enjoy these videos, make sure that like button helps out a ton. And if you're new to the Spawnway channel, make sure you subscribe down below. So this is a system I've been looking for, for for a little while now. It's one that wasn't very common in the US, but is very plentiful in Japan. And that's the new 3DS, not the new 3DS XL, like we are very familiar with here in the US. This is like the smaller version of that. This was basically the direct upgrade from the launch 3DS, that size. In fact, if you take this and you put it right next to our new 3DS XL, I mean, the size is apparent, but you open it up and the size difference becomes very, very obvious. The reason that I've wanted this one is because I feel like the screens just look better. And that's mostly due to them being smaller so the image looks sharper. When they blew up like the DSi to the DSi XL back in the day, that lower resolution image I don't think translated well to the larger screen, and that to me still holds true with the 3DS to the 3DS XL and even the, the new 3DS XL. But this new 3DS gets all the same benefits that were introduced with this new 3DS XL, just in a smaller form factor. You still have the, the C-Stick, all the internal upgrades when it comes to the, the CPU, the RAM, ability to use the, the micro SD card underneath of the back cover. And they even introduced some pretty cool things, which includes the ability to pop these off so you have like customizable faceplates. Unfortunately, these faceplates are stupidly expensive, just like seemingly everything with the 3DS. But even though I'm not customizing the system like I would if these faceplates were easy to get, I still like the look of it. It has kind of the Super Famicom themed buttons right here with the color scheme. We have that C-Stick, D-Pad's good. It, again, it's a new 3DS XL just shrunken down here. And the, the thing I will say is if you like the larger system, uh, maybe it's a bit easier to handle or something. Like, you're still gonna to wanna to stick to that, but I just think the, the benefits here of this system with the smaller screens outweighs the, the potential of maybe being able to hold it a, a bit better there with a larger system. But there is one thing that you're probably thinking about. The 3DS was region locked. And you would be right, which is why we technically have to run custom firmware on this 3DS. I've kind of held, held off from doing that because I would have wanted to buy stuff from the eShop. And, while I think you can still kind of access the eShop when you have custom firmware running, it, it's still, it's the idea of, okay, I, I don't know how long that could last with the system that I would then be running unsigned code on all this. But to me, Nintendo kind of resolved that for us. They're shutting down the eShop, so next year it won't really matter and that won't necessarily be a drawback any longer. And these systems or like half the price, importing them from Japan. I ordered this one on eBay, it's about $130, which compared to say, the Mario Special Edition that launched on Black Friday, which in the box is like 400 some odd dollars, but even that in decent condition is at times more than double what this cost on eBay. And it actually only took a couple of days to get to me from Japan. The person did a very good job packaging it and shipping it out to me through some sort of express shipping to get there that quickly. So right away, I loaded up custom firmware, went through a bunch of like tutorials for it. I'm not gonna link them or even show the process here because Nintendo, but I will tell you, it was pretty easy. And the step-by-step -step guide that exists on a certain website that's basically dedicated to showing you how to do it. It's very, very easy to follow, like step by step. And at times it was more thorough than I think it needed to be, but it was good because there were really no questions at all. And it just took time to go through loading things onto the SD card and essentially having the, the system load up like a save file exploit, at which point, it was loaded up with custom firmware. And as soon as that custom firmware was loaded, the region lock was gone, which means I can take either uh, the NTSC Persona Q2 or uh, even a DS game like Attack of the Saiyans, which are games that are becoming more and more valuable as we go along. And I would like to be able to play the physical copies of them. 
I got this system in particular knowing that I probably wasn't gonna do much in terms of digital storefront buying or playing those games. So I mostly wanted to get it for these titles. And in fact, like I said, once we have this modified, you can just drop the game in and it'll load right up. So we can see Persona Q2 popping up right here, and you can even take it a step further. Something I was really happy to see is I have a 256 gigabyte SD card in here. After I loaded the custom firmware and set it up with like, it basically has a custom like loading menu that you can drop into when you start it up. You can actually dump your physical copies of games onto the 3DS. So for example, I have Dragon Quest VIII and Dragon Quest VII right here. I dropped them into the system, went into the, the back end menu, and dump them onto the SD card. It took a little while. I think eight took the longest. It was like half an hour to dump to the SD card. And then I have Dragon Quest VII. Uh, neither of them are in there. In fact, I'll even take out the Persona Q2 cartridge. So there's nothing in like the cartridge menu there. But if I go to Dragon Quest VII, we can load it up and it'll drop me directly into the game. Again, with no cartridge involved, it's all just loaded onto the SD card. So if you go through, you dump all of your legal games onto it, you don't have to travel around necessarily with some, I mean, pretty expensive games now. These 3DS games aren't getting any cheaper. And uh, when the eShop closes down, yeah, look out for that. So I think the idea of being able to have backups of these games onto that SD card so you don't have to have wear and tear on your physical cartridges is great. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't necessarily work that way with DS games. I think there's more you have to do, but I know a lot of people just buy like those ACE cards and, and all this stuff. However, uh, you can just drop your DS games in the region free does apply to those games as well. And you can see I'm loading into Dragon Ball Z Attack of the Saiyans, which is an awesome game, that's right, from Monolith Soft, something a lot of people didn't know. This is a, an RPG for Dragon Ball Z, right? It leads all the way through like the early stages of it to obviously where the attack of the Saiyans with Vegeta and Nappa showing up, but there are some pretty cool side stories in it and the combat's pretty good too. It is straight up a turn-based JRPG. So if you're someone like me, who back in the day played the translated ROM of Legend of the Super Saiyan you gotta try this game. There is one other thing I wanna address when it comes to running the custom firmware and modding the system and all this. You'll notice that I do have everything in English. When I got this new 3DS, I realized that it was all in Japanese and unfortunately the Japan 3DS systems don't have any other languages that are available to you. Now, when you load up the custom firmware, all of the menus will be in the language that you chose to, to load up. So all of that was in English, that wasn't an issue there. But I still wanted to see if I could push this as far as possible. And there are actual images of, for example, this being a US-based new 3DS because that did exist. Fortunately, I was able to flash it to the system and it work where everything is in English as you would expect it to be. Now, there are some unfortunate side effects, one of which being the eShop just is just broken from what I can tell, but I didn't buy this once again to go on the eShop. I mostly wanted a new 3DS at like a fraction of the price with the ability to play my fizzle games. So if you decide to do this, you don't necessarily have to go this far with it because if you pop in a physical game, it'll just still play in English. That's not an issue there. I did have one issue with Dragon Quest VIII because it wants to load additional uh, information onto your SD card or your system. And that didn't necessarily work unless I had it set up as like a US based 3DS, which flash the image did fix it. But I, I think some games will have that issue running like uh, on a, a Japanese 3DS with an NTSC game, considering we've broken the region lock and the system isn't expecting that. Uh, neither is the game. And obviously there are other things you can do with the custom firmware being loaded onto it. I know MVG has done videos around different things this system can do with emulators and games being ported to it like Doom and, and Quake and all this, but I'm pretty happy with where it is now, just being a new 3DS that I can have to play all these different games, which would have cost me quite a bit more if I went for one of those limited edition uh, Mario bundles uh, or even like the Animal Crossing one. Also, I wanna comment very quickly on the repairability of the new 3DS versus the regular 3DS. 
it is good. Like, I already kind of knew what I was getting into because it still sort of mirrors what the new 3DS XL has, which is a lot of modular parts. So like the, the card reader, for example, for the games, that is modular. You also have a power board off to the side that water can get into that's modular, the C-Stick's modular, the analog stick's modular, the, the shoulder buttons. Basically, if something goes wrong with the system, you can probably find the part online for fairly cheap. You'll just have to work your way into the system, which isn't bad. There's a couple of Phillips head screws on the back, then it lifts up. The one annoying thing though, is having to press down the different cables for the shoulder buttons when you wanna close it back up. They even made the SD card slot on the back modular. So let's say you put the SD card in upside down or something crazy happens happens, you can replace that with a couple of screws. Now, I do want to stress there are a lot of things that can go wrong with this method, which means it's not going to be for everyone, whether it is just buying and having something shipped in internationally, which I've had stuff go wrong there and get lost in the mail, but also the fact that you do have to hack the system and you can brick the system technically. So keep all of this in mind. There is a risk factor involved going this route. But all in all, it was a fun project to see how it would all work out. I was really just curious if it was something that could be done in the first place. And turns out it is. eBay is flooded with these uh, Japan 3DS systems, whether it's a new 3DS or even new 3DS XLs for like a half to maybe even a third of the price of the US based ones. And with the eShop going away, I think this is a pretty good option. I mean, if you want to buy a new 3DS to download all this stuff off the eShop now, you're probably gonna have to bite the bullet and just pay the money for a new 3DS XL. But if you're someone who's thinking more along lines of, oh, years from now, I'll just be playing my physical games that I'm gonna be collecting here, I would say pretty soon, that's not a bad idea to pick one up from Japan and just break the region lock on it for use with all of those games. But let me know what you guys think about this down below and also, what do you prefer, the new 3DS or do you like the new 3DS XL more? Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.